congregation. It is a blessing to see all of you today. I'm hoping that uh, that this is going to be as beautiful a week it's as today is. It's supposed to be. It's man, supposed to be a gorgeous man. week. It, Finally, spring is in the air. Everyone's got smiles on their faces. <laughs> Here we are. It was 65 degrees when I walked to mm -hmm. church this morning. I felt like spring has sprung a few days early. So. Yes. So looking, looking good. We're, we're back in business That's right. in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll talk more about that before we finish. But right now our job is to read Noonday Prayers with you. And we're going to talk a little bit about Gregory of Nyssa today. So All right. um, let's begin on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and, and will be forever. Be forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 19, verses 1 through 7. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one night imparts knowledge to one another. Although they have no words or language. And their voices are not heard. Their sound has gone out into all lands. And their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Wisdom of Solomon, which is one of our books in the Apocrypha, chapter 7. For wisdom is more mobile than any motion. Because of her pureness, she pervades and penetrates all things. For she is a breath of the power of God and a pure emanation of the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, nothing defiled gains entrance into her. For she is a reflection of eternal light, a spotless mirror of the working of God, and an image of his goodness. Although she is but one, she can do all things. And while remaining in herself, she renews all things. In every generation, she passes into holy souls and makes them friends of God and prophets. For God loves nothing so much as the person who lives with wisdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gregory of Nyssa is uh, one of the fourth century um, theologians of the church, uh, known as one of the three Cappadocian fathers. Uh, the Cappadocians, uh, his brother Basil the Great, and, uh, and Greg Gregory of Nazianzus. Uh, the three of them were very influential as the church was trying to put words to their understanding of God's nature, who God is and what God has done and what the, the essential essence of God means to us and therefore how we might live. And, and Gregory of Nyssa is really interesting uh, when you want to study something about uh, the development of theology. Um, he's really known for... Uh, kind of standing out on his own, even from his brother and his friend, Gregory of Nazianzus. Um, Gregory of Nyssa uh, was the one who more than anyone else stood for a couple of concepts about God where he took scripture and then he reflected with the Greek philosophy and he found places that they were uh, consistent and then wrote theology that really influenced even to today. He is of great influence to people, especially in the areas of the nature of God and the Trinitarian understanding of who God is. Um, 
Gregory of Nyssa really stands apart from most of his contemporaries in the areas of God as infinite and God of salvation being for all. He was really Rob Bell before Rob Bell became Rob Bell. <laughs> uh, kind of uh, stood in opposition to others, taking some of the thoughts from the theologian Origen, um, who was banned as a heretic, um, taking Origen's thoughts and making them more concrete with scripture and philosophy uh, in terms of salvation for all. But beyond that, the, probably the thing that I like the most about Gregory of Nyssa is his concept of why God for us is sometimes unimaginable. He was someone who said, if God is truly infinite, which we know God is because God's love and care and wisdom are all essential and if anything is going to last for all infinity and serve all of God's creation, it has to be infinite. It has to be longer than creation. And so he argued that the essence of God is bigger than anything we can imagine because we are finite and God is infinite. And he said, Anytime we try to define God too narrowly, we end up putting God into a box that we can, we can manage to understand. Right. And when we can understand, you can guarantee that we have misidentified God. As soon as we start to define something too small, we've missed the real God. And he said, if you can put it into words, you've created a heresy. <laughs> Which is why we have so much trouble preaching Trinity Sunday uh, with trying to make definition instead of understand the Trinity as a historical document of what has been revealed. Gregory of Nyssa gives us that saying that I've, I've quoted Bishop Dyer a number of times that uh, if you think you can define God, you've made yourself bigger than God. And that's when you start to realize you're on the wrong track. So um, Gregory of Nyssa is somebody that I will commend to you. Uh, he's actually uh, very readable and, uh, and someone that you can find lots of ways of understanding what he has to say. But he's become more important than ever in the last couple of centuries as someone who wrote in the 300s. <laughs> and yet here we are, we see his wisdom is deeper than most of us can actually ever attain to. So Gregory of Nyssa... If you want to understand God, he says, give it up. <laughs> but but that's not really what he says because he writes book after book after book <laughs> to explain why you won't get it, the yes. point. Yes. Um, but don't try to make your God too small. Allow God to be God. Allow God to be limitless, infinite, full of love, and more than we can ever put our arms around. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay. Let's continue with our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who Lord art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but, but deliver, deliver us from, from evil. evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Amen. We invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, and I know there are plenty of both these days. 
Um, and so we'll start with those people who are on the Older Nation prayer list. I want to begin with uh, remembering the life of Forrest Newhall, who we will do uh, the burial office for this afternoon at 2. So please keep Joanne in your prayers. Uh, it's, a, it's just a family-only graveside service, uh, but she loves to know that you are supporting her in her time of grief. Um, she said she sure misses all of us. She misses church, but she misses coffee hour more. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> the strength of the community is her strength. Um, also, Carl Sturzing, who had emergency surgery in the middle of the night on Sunday morning, um, is doing very well in recovery and hopes to get out of the hospital on Friday. So keep him in your prayers. And Julie Sturzing, who broke her ankle or fractured her ankle last week. Um, Jose Masonave uh, and his family, uh, his sister died last week, and uh, we keep them in our prayers as well. Sid and Joanne Kilgore, um, also uh, Stephanie Kusek, Danny Charlie and Maria Swift, Patricia Cook, Letty Bonet, Shannon Briotti, James Hines, Albert Ni Niaga, Jean Dean Rogers, Emily and Kim, Michael Murphy, Uncle Lanny, Sarah Hill, Ruth Rudolph, Rick and Robert Williamson, Mike Donovan, Jess Martin, Cindy Buck Bixby, Arden Reed, Cinda O'Connor, Jorge and Maria Sayers, Meg Pritchard, Carvel Taylor, Jessica Williamson, Jane Rodriguez, Stan Hopkins, Cliff Lewis, the people of Atlantic Shores, Bay Lake and Westminster Canterbury, that all may be safe in these days. Hope Matthews, Diana Skipper, Brian Hunt and Heather Hang Hunt, Brian Miller and his brother Ray, Meredith Guzman, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchi, who we heard another report from this morning, uh, and says that Howard is recovering slowly and she wishes for faster recovery, but she knows she's just being impatient and gives thanks for all of you saying your prayers and sending birthday cards, which we many of us did last week. Also, uh, for Amy, Linda Erickson, Pam Campbell, Ruth Ann, Donna, Carol, Bill, Gloria, Joe, Martha Gentry, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond, students and teachers and parents of all who are enrolled in school, victims of racial injustice and for God's vision of a beloved community to be our vision of this world, for peace, for deployed peacemakers everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel fighting COVID on the front lines, as well as those administering and planning for distribution of vaccines. And um, a couple things to announce um, about things that are happening. There are no birthdays or anniversaries today, but, uh, but I want to uh, point out that this weekend is Linda Erickson's birthday. And in the chimes tomorrow, we will send out her mailing address where you can send a birthday card to Linda. And I know she would be overwhelmed with joy. So uh, we'll include that for you to do. Also, this coming Sunday, we will have 10 o'clock outdoors. We will have the 1130 streaming service. 1130 streaming service will be Holy Communion. And tomorrow and Thursday, we will have people distributing communion kits between 10 and 2 at the bell tower, or actually right inside the narthex of the church. But if you pull up around the bell tower between 10 and 2, we will get communion kits to you. Know that there will be a line of day school cars from about noontime or a little bit before noontime until 1220. So that's the best time to avoid. But one way or the other, we'll find you and get you your kit. Be patient if you show up and somebody doesn't bring it to you immediately. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, 
we received word from the diocese today that, uh, that we are going to be able to start indoor worship. Eight o'clock service will begin not this Sunday, but the Sunday following. So March 21st, we will have eight o'clock indoors, 10 o'clock outdoors, 1130 streamed. And that will be true for several weeks following, okay? So I think that's most of my announcements anyway. Anything else that you know of? Nope, just to join me tomorrow night for, uh, for our wild desert wilderness program, 7 o'clock on Zoom. Wonderful, wonderful. It is a wonderful day. I love the sunshine. I love the fact that this is a harbinger of better days ahead. Spring really will come, and, uh, and we will be able to do all kinds of things okay. in the future. So. Also, look for an announcement about a, an, a youth bonfire that we're going to have a week from Saturday. So on March 20th is what we're working towards. Uh, on that Saturday evening, we'll have a bonfire to kind of regain our momentum for youth ministry here. So be looking for that as well. Okay? All right. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Yes. See you tomorrow. See ya. Okay.